In the first part of the Connect 4 series, we created the UI for the game, which consists largely of the game board, which in essence consists of only a single small component, namely a single cell. The board is now ready, so we can start thinking about state management and first steps in the implementation of the game logic. For the state management, we use the package getx, so let's first add the dependency and then set up getx. I go to the getx package site, grab this line here, paste it into the pubspec yaml file, save it, now it gets downloaded, and now we have to rename this to get material app, import the get package. So now we can use the state management functionalities of the get package. Then I remove the home attribute and instead use the initial route and provide all the pages that we are using. And then at the moment we only have one, which is our game screen. Save it. Okay. Um, of course, we have to restart the app. So I just restarted the app and everything works fine. Next, I'd like to create a separate folder for our controllers. And inside controllers, we have the game controller, which will hold all of our game logic. So I create a class game controller, which extends getx controller. And here we will write all the code for our game logic. So I save this. And the last thing I'd like to do is to bind the game controller to our game screen so that whenever the game screen gets called, our game controller is loaded. And if you're not familiar with GetX and you'd like to learn more about it and how it works, then I highly recommend you to watch the tutorial series from Amateur Coder in order to learn more about GetX. So let's set up our binding. Therefore, I create another folder which I call Core. And inside Core, I create a folder Bindings. Inside this folder, I create a Dart file which I name main bindings. And inside main bindings, let's create a class main bindings which extends bindings. And now we have to create a missing override. And here, load the game controller lazily. Import it. So, like this. Inside our get material app, we can set an initial binding, which of course is our main binding or main bindings. Save it. And now, whenever game screen is called, and game screen is our initial route, and whenever it gets called, our main binding gets called, and here we lazily load the game controller. Now we can start implementing the game logic. We're inside the game controller now and as I already said in the first part of this series, our board consists of seven columns and each column has six rows or six cells. And a cell holds a coin which can have three kinds of states. It is either empty, it is yellow, or it is red. In order to represent those three types of states, we can take an integer, and as we need six of them, we can put them into a list, so into a list of integers, and as each one of those lists represents one board column, we can put them again into a list, which will be the representation of the whole board. So we need a list of lists of integers. And in order to make this list reactive, we create an rx list of list of integers with the name of board. Uh, 
And for this one, we create a getter list of lists of integers, which will return board.value. And a setter board that takes a list of lists of integers. like this one. And in order to pre-populate the board, let's create a method, build board, that initializes our board with list filled six zero. So with list dot filled, we create an integer list that holds only zeros. So at the beginning, we want our board to be empty. Therefore, we need zeros for each board column or for each cell. And we take six of them. So we have a list of six zeros. And we need, of course, seven of those for each column in order to represent the whole board. And of course, let's set it with this board. And this method should be called whenever we start the game controller or whenever the game controller is initialized. So therefore we use the onInit function. And here we call build board. This build board method should be responsible for the UI or in other words, the UI of the board should be dependent on this build board method. So let's close all of those unnecessary files and go into the board.dart where our board columns are built. But instead of manually passing those board columns, we want this to be created with a method that we call build board. And this build board method will return a list of board column widgets by returning the board variable from our game controller, which we have to get in the first place by using our find method. So the game controller is already initialized because we created this main binding and with the game uh, with the get find method we can find this instance and now inside of this instance we make use of our board getter and we map each of those board columns we take each entry of this list and map that to a board column like this and of course we have to transform that to a list now let's save and as you can see the ui is still building so this one works fine next is our board column widget which holds different cells and each one of them has a different state so here we also need the game controller instance The board column widget should be represented by a list of integers, which I call column of player chips. This has to be initialized with the constructor, which is not a const constructor. And of course, this one is required. And instead of manually passing this list of cells, we create another method for that. Build board column, which returns a list of cell widgets. And this method, of course, has to return a list of cell or a list of cell widgets. In order to do that, we loop through the column of player chips integer list and map each number that is inside of this list of integers to a cell. 
and then transform that to a list. And now we are good to go. I save it. We have an error because our column of player chips is null because we're not passing anything through the constructor, which has to happen in our board widget here where we are creating our board column. Here we have to pass the board column through the constructor. And if we save this now, everything works fine. Let's summarize what we just did, just so that we can understand what has to happen next. So we are calling the build board method of our game controller inside of our board widget. And here we are creating a board column widget for each list inside of our board list of lists. So we have a board variable that consists of multiple lists and each of those lists has up to six integers. We call that inside our build board method in the board widget to create the different columns. And inside our board columns, we call a build board column method that checks for each integer inside of the list and creates a cell. So our board UI is totally dependent on the game controller now, but the cell widget will always be empty. It will never show any other state and is not able to show different states. So in the next part of the series, we will implement the logic which is required to show different colors inside of a cell. And we will make the columns of the board selectable so that whenever we click on a column, the next free cell gets filled by the color of the player whose turn it is. If you liked the video, please leave me a feedback. And in order not to miss any of my future videos, you are welcome to subscribe to my channel. Also feel free to check out the links in the video description with additional information. And what else can I say? Have a nice day and hopefully we'll see us in the next video.